Defining youth and leadership. Youth is best described as best understood as a period of transition from dependence of childhood to adulthood's independence. Youth is often referred to as a person between the ages of leaving compulsory education and finding the, their first job. The United Nations for Statistical Purposes defined these persons, those persons between the ages of 15 and 24 as youth without prejudice to other definition by member states. Leadership is all about strategy, development, impact, positive influence, and being environmentally aware. There are so many issues associated with being a youth, both from a global view, with respect to a country system, enhanced by its policy, and in the Nigerian situation. Generally, youths are associated with being energetic and innovative due to their young minds and perhaps young bodies. According to population projections by the United Nations for 2020, about 43% of Nigerian population comprised of children between 0 to 14 years and 19% aged 15 to 24 years and about 62% are below 25 years. By contrast, less than 5% is aged 60 and above. Despite Nigerians increasing young population, there are some issues posing as barriers to youth development. Some of these issues are ageism and exclusion, in a, inadequately funded educational institutions or lack of proper education, youth de delinquency, insecurity, lack of adequate engagement, underemployment and unemployment. Deliv developing youth opportunities and benefits includes inclusive policy, both in public and private sectors, geared towards national sustainability, intergenerational skill transfer and mentorship, building trust and collaboration beyond the stereotypes of ageism towards effective leadership, harnessing youthful effervescence and inspired innovation for fast socioeconomic growth of Nigeria, reorientation of the society towards service-driven system for our collective achievement as a nation. Can I say here that I'm a youth? From the sure, day. I'm, sure, I'm, you I'm, are. I'm, I'm Absolutely. My energy and my that place. I'm Absolutely. Please take my that so Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, five percent. No. Absolutely. So, I'm forever young. I'm a youth. Mm, forever. So I was going to young. ask a question to you. Um, uh, any town. What do you think about this issue of ageism? You know, when we talk about ageism, mm -hmm. some people have this uh, in some quarters. You tell you this stereotype. Oh, at, at this certain age, you cannot achieve these same things. Like mm -hmm. during the Sorosuke mm -hmm. Sega, mm -hmm. you know, police you, will tell you, mm -hmm. "Oh, you are a young boy. How are you driving this kind of car?" You know, this question you're asking is a very interesting question for me, and not just because you're bringing up. And I, I probably your example of Sorosuke, which is a young boy, but the first part of it that really hits me and. A few years ago, like five years ago or so, I actually did a post on Facebook and I said to myself that why do a lot of opportunities that come up, especially when you're looking at international global opportunities, stop at age 35? Yeah. I mean, I raised it. I said to myself, so it raised people coming up and sending questions to me. And I discovered a few platforms out of Nigeria that actually have programs that really launch people back into life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's only for women. Where, so ageism is a real problem. But then taking it to the younger people, I think one of the things that has happened in Nigeria, especially as a country, is that we sort of like mollycoddle our young people. We so pamper them. Everything is a matter of you finish school before you actually go and get a job. Exactly. So the expectation for income or for independence is, ex is at a certain age. Delayed, eh? Well, ideally, you are, school is not supposed to be just a means to an end. It's a learning process. And you should be able to start to do some level of independence. So the, you, you triggered me by asking about that ageism question. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of things, I mean, I push for a lot of those things around that. But then on both sides of the divide, no one is too young to be successful. Yeah, no and no one is old. too old to start a dream afresh, no matter what mm. way it is that your yeah. career or your mates have been. I like See. that. I like that. Actually, when they, when, during the 20, 2019 election, the period I had the 2019 election, when they came to Not Too Young to Rule campaign, I had this thought in me. Yes, I like the fact that they want young people to be involved in politics, but I also feel that I don't like being around young people that think old people have expired, they should go. No. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. everybody should be allowed to do whatever they need to yeah. do in as much as they have the right skills mm -hmm. and knowledge to contribute to societal development. What do you think about 
the issue of systematic inclusion and policy, especially for gender issues relating to Nigeria. Because we're talking about youth. Youth is not gender focused. A youth can be either a woman or a man. Mm -hmm. So most times people have this idea of saying, oh, young boys should do this, or young men should do What do you think about developing young ladies too and uh, having young men contribute meaningfully to leadership and national development, Juliet? Thank you for that question. There's a lot of questions, really. <laughs> and um, if you come to the gender side, I think in terms of development, everybody should have an opportunity, irrespective sure. of your gender, your race, your nationality, or anything. If you are interested in something, you should be given the opportunity yeah. to express yourself and be developed, like you have said. Mm. So I think, I don't believe we should do a gradual, what's it called, integration of young people into leadership. Leadership is influence. Leadership is a lot of things. Anybody can be a leader. Once you have the interest, you have the skill, and every skill is learnable. Sure. So and I don't think there's a particular age where you should cut off people and say, oh, you can't be this, you can't be that. Anybody can be anything. If the person has the interest, all the country needs is that structure to make it effective. Mm. So I can be 20 and be a leader. I can be 80 and be an if ineffective leader. It's not mm. age-based. Yeah. So open the system. Let there be a criteria to bring people in, irrespective of their age. And let there also be a selection process to kick people Very out true. That's who it. are incompetent. <laughs> but, but you see, at, at the end of the day, right, if you, yeah. look at, if you look at this, ageism on its own, since we, I mean, we're all talking about that, let me not be the only one that is looking at that. <laughs> Ageism on its own, for me, it's both um, a reality and a problem. Mm. Why do I say that? Yes, we, we use age to kick a lot of people out of uh, what they deserve. But at the same time, age is a reality in the sense that when we look at the States and maybe the West, from, and that's why I tell people that from a teenager, you are taught to go work in a supermarket, to raise funds for yourself, yeah. go and do this, go and do that. Mm -hmm. So from a tender age, maybe 15, 16, you're working you so you can make money mm -hmm. to buy your phone. Mm -hmm. But from our own tender age, you are giving all these things. Mm -hmm. So if somebody tells you in Nigeria that at the age of 20, how did you get this? He hasn't done anything wrong, mm -hmm. technically, in, in our context oh. as Nigerians. Because at age of 20, let's ask, tell ourselves the truth. How many youth are working? At that age, that, that's earning a lot, to live earning a a lot exactly to live a certain lifestyle. So, within, but however, in the States, for example, you're talking about Mark Zuckerberg's and their likes. When did they start their company? They've been working for so long. How many yeah, people at the age of 22 in Nigeria have bank accounts? Some people open bank accounts when they're going to the university, of which in some other climes, I mean, in the West and stuff, you're working, you're saving, you're doing this. Even when we are giving money as kids, our parents don't give it to us, they at spend all, it. They collect the yeah, money. They, they collect the money. <laughs> so, if at that age, you are told your there, that this, we, for our context. I agree with your thoughts, but mm. hang on a second. There is, hold your thoughts, and then let's link it to this idea of intergenerational skill transfer and mentorship. You were saying something about too much focus earlier on entertainment and mm. neglecting other aspects. We have youths that are or talented in different areas. Every Nigerian youth must not be involved in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Some are, are talented in technology, mm -hmm. in the art and other aspects. So what do you think the government or the society, both from the private sector mm -hmm. or the public sector, can mm -hmm. do to enhance this skill? Because mm -hmm. I remember some time ago, I went to um, a telecommunication industry then, why our uh, company, I will not disclose the name, while I was doing my IT so many years ago, or not so long ago, and then they, they told me then <laughs> you don't want to fall out of the youth bracket. <laughs> I see. It's <laughs> all right. They said they are not going to accept any young Nigerian undergraduates to work in their firm on internship because they have high hybrid system. So I kept wondering if they don't transfer this skill to us, and it's a foreign company, by mm. the way, how do we have people that can stand up? You know, listen. The, the truth is. The truth is. A lot of times when we talk youth, we talk youth like they're handicapped, like they're underprivileged. Youth are not underprivileged. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, was, I believe in this, that when we say nothing is working in Nigeria, almost every aspect of Nigeria that is working today, that is working, mm -hmm. you have a lot of youth influence in it. True. If, uh, if we're winning awards globally in the music or in the entertainment, it's run by the youth. Sports. Yeah, sure. It's sports, right. it's the youth. So, and that's why I tell people that when it comes to politics and all these things, we did not wait for it to be handed over to us. The youth, mm. well, I'm a bit above the youth age, but, <laughs> really? you know, yeah, I'm a bit above it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, we did not wait. People fought for it and kept spending their own time and money. Mm. But that we don't practice when it comes to politics. 
Because and the, the system if, is paying no, system. no, but you see, and politics itself, we have a wrong idea, understanding of politics. We look at politics at the presidency. No. Mm. Politics is your area. It's local, yeah. If you get your area right, people can even tell you that if you don't go for uh, chairmanship, who we'll support you. How many people have earned that kind of influence mm. in their area to earn the trust of people to the extent that you are told go? And listen, all these people we talk about, they are sure Jews and go, they all started as Jews in their 30s. Sorry, they I fought their way through. Question that he asked you about intergenerational mm. transfer of skills and mentorship. I have a because this question came up. I saw on somebody's status and she spoke about how you know you're already a young person. You go for a job and they ask you for experience. And then he said he went to for an internship and he said they want they didn't want young unemployed young undergraduates. But I have I have a question. I said one I understand that issue and we used to all kid about it. The reality of life is that knowledge is accessible to almost everyone as well i especially today if you're a young person if you've been if you've been a young person or in that age bracket for the last five to ten years you cannot actually hide under the guise of they did not give you, you know what senator that is a different topic on its own we <laughs> should <laughs> move on <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep saying we will not leave all right so, so, actually, so, 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 so I must say before we round up oh, okay. i'm so sorry okay. <laughs> is what he said about people but I mean, sectors mm. behaving like they are handicapped. Mm. It hits. Wow. You know, that hits. It hits. There, I know the, the economy does not enable, it doesn't, it doesn't make it easy, mm. but nobody is disabled. Mm. Exactly. You can do something. something. Yeah. Sure. You can make a difference. I know you can't be the president. Like you said, <laughs> you can start from your streets mm. and make a difference yeah. in your school, yeah. in your place of work. Just try and don't behave like you are disabled That's or true. you are handicapped. That's well, true. thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. We would actually try our best. We, we encourage youth out there to try their best, do something, don't rest. And then, speaking of which, after the break, we're going to call on Juliet to come and sit